All right, now we're doing problem 26. And this one uses the concept of regularity, which in this section of Falland is defined in kind of a strange way. Um, so let's write it out to, we'll, we'll use his definition, um, but I'll make some comments on it. To say mu plus, uh, lambda plus mu is regular means that for all k compact, we have lambda plus mu of k is less than infinity. And for all um, Borel subsets of Rn, and we're going to call this script B. Glad I learned cursive in grade school, because now I'm actually using it for something. We have lambda plus mu of E equals the infimum for all nu u, u open, and E is contained in u. Now, what this actually says here is um, to say that all compact sets are finite, um, another that's that could also be called um, locally finite. And to say that um, lambda plus mu e is like this infimum thing here, this is often referred to as outer regularity. And I think you actually... Um, this uh, Falland actually discusses this in chapter seven and actually calls this outer regularity. And in fact, you can prove typically what you would do is you would call um, a measure regular if it is both inner and outer regular, where inner regular is the same thing as this definition, but you replace inf with soup, you replace u with k, and k compact, and then you replace e contains k, so k is a subset of e, so it's kind of like inner, like you're approximating it from the inside by compact sets. And so this is, and what you can do is you can prove that if you have a locally finite measure, which is a locally finite measure on Rn, which is outer regular, you can prove that it's inner regular. And so, in some sense, because we're working on Rn, and so things tend to be nice, it doesn't really matter, but this is still a little bit of an awkward definition, but we'll deal with it here. So, first, uh, well, let's take care of the easy case first. So we want to prove that uh, mu and lambda are regular by this definition. So for all k compact, um, let's see here, what is lambda k plus mu k? Lambda k plus mu k is equal to lambda plus mu k. And this is less than infinity since, um, since lambda plus mu is a regular measure. And so lambda k and mu k must both be finite. And this follows from the very, like a very important theorem of analysis, which is that if you have two things that are positive and add up to something that's less than infinity, then those two things are less than infinity. It's a neat fact. So anyways, now for something that's a little bit not completely trivial. So to deal with um, inner regularity, this actually turns out to be kind of neat. Um, so since we haven't used uh, the mutual singularities yet, so let's say since this is this, there exists an E in script B such that, um, let's say lambda E is equal to mu of E complement is equal to zero. 
So mu lives on e, and lambda lives on e complement. Um, then say for any f in b, um, we have so your lambda f is equal to lambda f intersect e plus lambda f intersect e complement because measures are things that you can do this thing with. It's just disjoint additivity um, or whatever the technical term for that is. Plus, but this is equal to lambda of f intersect e complement since lambda doesn't live on e. So then, um, but then this is certainly going to be less than or equal to the infimum overall um, f intersect e complement contained in u open lambda u. So by this I just mean um, the infimum over all open sets u such that f intersect e complement is contained in u. Um, but then what is this equal to? This is equal to, um, this, is a this is a less than or equal to um, the infimum over, just write f intersect e complement subset of u, lambda plus mu of u, because we're just adding on more stuff to it, potentially. Um, but what's this? This is equal to lambda plus mu of f intersect e complement and that's because lambda plus mu is outer regular. But then this is equal to lambda f intersect e complement plus mu f intersect e complement. Um, let's, write, let's expand this out a little bit because I don't have enough space to finish it out. This is equal to lambda of f intersect e complement and that's because mu of e complement is zero, so certainly this is going to be zero. Um, but as we saw earlier, f intersect, lambda f intersect e complement is lambda f. And so this is one of those neat arguments, I really like these kinds of arguments where you have like a bunch of inequalities and stuff, but then you end up with what you started with. And so equality holds throughout and so in particular um, what do we have particular lambda f is equal to the infimum overall f intersect e complement contained in u open lambda u but this is certainly going to be equal to the infimum over all f contained in u open of lambda u. Because if you were to if you were to remove this instruction that f intersect e complement has to be contained in u and actually just make it that f is contained in u, then what you can do is you can take this f and break it up into the part that's in e and the part that's in e complement. Yeah, that's in e complement. And the part that's in E will contribute nothing to the measure because E is lambda null. Um, hence, lambda is regular because we already know that these things are, um, they satisfy the compactness um, property. And this can, here confirms um, outer regularity. So now we want to prove the same thing for mu. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to write over these things. So actually, let's use a new color. Let's use blue. Da ba dee da ba die. So, then for any f and b, we have 
So here now we're going to look at mu. So we have mu of f is equal to mu here plus mu here. This is equal to, let's write it up here, mu of f intersect e not complement, which is less than or equal to, you've got this thing again in here open, and this here is mu. Same thing here. This becomes lambda and mu. Yeah, those are both the same. I'm not going to worry about that. So we remove this complement here. Then we remove this complement here and this one here. Then this, we leave the mu in there. Then this becomes mu of f. So equality holds her out. And so in particular, mu f equals inf of these things. Open mu f. It should look like a mu. Then equals inf x f and u open mu u. And hence, mu is regular. Um, I think I've replaced everything that needs to be replaced, but if I haven't, you basically get the idea. It's basically the same exact argument, but you flip around everything that needs to be flipped around. Or, I think the Latin for that is mutatis mutandis. So, anyways, once you've done this, you have completed the proof.